Thank you so um, good evening everybody. Do I stand or you want me to sit? Okay. Oh, he has done the introduction. He has said everything. So I don't need to get back to it. Okay, my name is Halima Abdul Salam and I think I know a few of you. We've had engagements. Um, this evening, I want to talk about resilience. I actually wanted to talk about something else, but on my way here, something said, why don't you just talk about resilience? Because resilience gives birth to a lot of things. Lack of it gives birth to depression. Lack of it gives birth to unhappiness. And um, a lot. So what is resilience? Simply put, it's just your ability to thrive in difficulties. What makes you different from the other person is not because you're not as beautiful as that person or you're not as hardworking as that person or uh, you're not as innovative as that person. The only difference is because you're not resilient. You, you, can, you can put two people to a task in an office, a relationship, an organization, name it. The first person starts the task. And before getting to the middle, he says, oh my God, no, I don't think I can do this. But the other person was given the same task. He goes, he feels, he tries, he keeps going, he moves, he finds difficulties, probably he's hoped somewhere. And he keeps going. And before you know it, he gets to the promised land. What's the promised land? Probably he submits that assignment. He's been appraised for it. He's been promoted for it. But then don't forget, two people were given that same task. And one felt, no, it's too hard. I can't do it. I can't deal. And he stopped on the way. But the other person's ability to thrive has gotten him to that place. I hear a lot of people talk about depression. It's real. I just talked about it where I'm coming from. Everybody can be depressed, including the president of Nigeria. Yeah. People get it wrong. When you say depression, the first thing that comes to someone's mind, oh, probably he doesn't have money. He's having a bad day. He's not eating. His children are out of school. He's having a bad relationship. His marriage is crumbling. Uh, he's owing people. No, that's not it. Do you know you can have a good job and still be depressed? It's either you have that good job, you have that good marriage, but then you're thinking, aside this job, if I'm taken out of this job, what becomes of me? And in your mind, you are not thinking of anything outside the box. All your life thinks of is this job, this job, this job. Sometimes I, I, I tell myself it's the moment of truth. You know you're the only person that can tell yourself the truth. If we gather in this room and start telling Chidima something from Monday till Friday, the only one you will take is the one you tell yourself. Because I may be telling you this based on maybe I want, to, I want a favor from you. I may be telling you probably maybe you're the one to appraise me. I may be telling you maybe I want something you understand from you. But the only one that will be the true and true, true one is the one you tell yourself. So that particular person that has that job feels in his heart that if this job is taken from him, he's gone. Do you know you can depress him? Because change is inevitable. That person may not be seen as important anymore in that job, in that office. And someday somebody tells you to go. What do you fall back to? What can you do? What can you thrive in? What is that thing you feel you can do with yourself? 
I tell you a story. Um, two weeks ago, my son kept on disturbing me. Mommy, please, can I have this money? I want to get this, I want to get this, I want to get this. So he disturbed me so much, he was asking for 10,000. So I said, okay, no, I can give you 5,000. He said, okay, mommy, let me have the 5,000. I gave him. When he saw that um, I was on the, uh, uh, on the phone, he came and he said, mommy, I said, what do you mean? That's the remaining 5,000. <laughs> you know, I got angry. I said, but I've given you. I didn't want him to distract me, but he knew that was the time to get me. I went, ah, what is it? I've given you 5,000. He said, he now came close. He, said, he held the phone. He said, mommy, the remaining 5,000. Do you know this boy disturbed me to the point that I got angry. I opened my bag, just threw the 5,000 to him. And I said, you're just too. He said, no, don't say the word. It's called resilience. Honestly, I was, yes. He said, it's called resilience. Persist, mommy. Persist, disturb until you get what you want. <laughs> and that was why I started the intro by telling you of two people given the same task. One succeeds and the other. I am not an advocate of then they do me from village. No, you're the one doing yourself. Because even if truly there's anything like that, I don't believe in it. Even if there is, you should be in that strife. They say you won't go to school, prove them wrong. You can't succeed in that marriage. No, I will. You can't be the most beautiful. Do you know there was a girl I came across one day and she said, looking at that girl, she's very ugly. And you know what she said to me? Ma, I feel I'm the most beautiful of them all. Amongst her friends, yes. And do you know what she has done? She has given herself that niche. So anywhere she goes to, she feels she is the most beautiful girl. So there's nothing you tell her in this life that will make her feel ugly. Because she's truly ugly. She has resisted. I will not take ugly for a name. And that is what gave birth to depression. A lot of people are depressed because you cannot eat three times in a day. Because you cannot do that job that you feel, why should I do this job? Do you know what other people have done? Is it because people don't tell their stories? Back in school, I had this boyfriend that was an every guy, every girl's guy. He was a basketballer. You know, in school now, when they see basketballers and everything. So people will come to me and tell me, ah, we saw your guy, with, we saw a day with this girl. We saw this one, ah. When I talk to him, he say, ah, they don't believe them. They want to just spoil this relationship. That's why they keep talking. That in fact, let me even shock you. It's not everything they say you, be, you believe. In fact, it's not everything you see that you believe. Do you know that's true? Yeah. Yes. People, last week I handled a case on a Sunday. I wept till I slept. And anytime I talk about it, I get goosebumps and I'm close to tears. I have this friend in my group. We call her the goddess of love. She's the most happy person in the group. I woke up on a Sunday morning and I saw I was added to a group. Save me from depression. Only for me to look at the person that actually coined that group and it was the goddess of love. I just said to my son that, I said, this um, scam as I at it again. And my son said, what? I just realized I was talking to a child. So I called her. And she was crying. Was it you that added me to a group? Yes. Was it you that actually added me to a group? Yes. To everybody, she's the goddess of love. To everybody, she's the happiest in the group. To everybody, she's the stress-free person. But then, she's the one with the most. 
And that's why anytime I think about it, it's not everything that you believe is true. What is that situation? What is that challenge you have that you feel you can't change? Let me share a story. Because it's, it's, it's going to be interactive, right? So I try to see and then I give you with um, live instances. My friend was dedicating, doing this dedication for her child. And she insisted I follow her to church. As a liberal person that I am, I said, okay, no problem. What time? She told me 10 o'clock. So when I stepped into the church, what caught my attention was when the pastor was preaching. And he said, most of you will say, you keep praying. And you say, God bless the works of my hands. And God will search and see nothing in it. What does he bless? Then they follow me from village. You sit back and you put your hands together. My enemies, who are your enemies? You don't want to go to school. You don't want to graduate with good grades. You don't want to hustle for jobs. You don't want to be serious with your job. You don't want to be serious with your... For everything that you achieve in life, you have to thrive. You have to work. You have to earn it. She doesn't respect me. You, did you earn it? For everything in life, you work for it. Is it a relationship? Is it marriage? Is it business? Is it your job? Is it the way you look? Is it your finances? Is it in your parenting? Do you want to be outstanding? You have to truly work for it. Take a very good example. You guys just sit in your uh, comfort zones and abuse this, this leader. Nonsense. He's campaigning and lying. He's working. Oh, he's working, yeah. He's working. Because you see the result when he's truly there. Does anybody abuse him anymore? Has he not earned it? He may have lied to you. I'm sitting here now. Um, let's assume I'm going to be paid for this. I sit down here. I tell you guys what you want to hear. I lie to you. You clap for me. I jack Mev when I say, my friend, let me have my money and I go. But in all my lies, in all my lies, you will sit down and pick the ones you want to take. There is nobody that is not great. There's nobody that is not great. It's your ability to thrive to greatness. I've been faced with a lot of hurdles in my life. And um, I've not let any of them weigh me down. I always tell people that's the difference, uh, that is the difference I have with people. I don't let issues, difficulty, challenges weigh me down. I find a way around it. If you're doing uh, words and opposite challenges, of course, you have to get the opposite of it. Issues, you have to get the opposite of it. Difficulties, get the opposite. You want to be great. You just sit down in your comfort zone. You're not doing anything. And you expect greatness to walk into your room and meet you. When people are out there looking for it and working hard. You get it. Olympics, we all sit down now. People are, it's time for, uh, what do they call it? Uh, yes. We sit down, we, sh we close shops, we do this, we do that. That's the end result. They have toiled morning and night to make you sit down and you collect your money. 
it worked. And you close your shop or your office, you have not worked for the day. You go and watch people's efforts and you expect to be on the same page with them, no? At the end of that World Cup, I, I don't want to imagine what they will take home. What have you taken home? I want all of you to sit down after this talk. In a month and maybe some days, we'll get to 2023, inshallah. Ask yourself what you want to do this year, that, the next year. Every year. <laughs> I have a sister that <laughs> every year she has a new year resolution, but there's one that she never, ever achieves. I don't know the day she'll achieve it. He knows her. She's his bestie. For everything you want, you can get it. But you must be able to drive hard. Hard work has not killed anybody. It hasn't killed anybody. I'm sure a lot of you have your mothers around or maybe your parents around and everything. I lost my mom when I just finished secondary school that same year. And I have three younger ones to take care of. You can imagine. I became a mother at 15. Yes, to my younger ones. And up to today, I still back them. But if I had said, no, my mother has died, and I'm too young, and probably wherever she is, she won't forgive me because my siblings would have been scattered. Men don't care. Yes, I have a dad up to now, but then, he doesn't care. If he brings food to the table, he's done everything he can. Who does the parenting? I had to do the parenting. I had to do the parenting. For every goal, you can get to it. But most importantly, you have to pray. You cannot overemphasize that. You have to pray ceaselessly. My friends will say, Halima, if you get church, you go sell. I said, not be your business. It's just that I have this personal relationship with God. We must have personal relationship with God. I always challenge him. I tell him in every way I have, I have done my bit. And I expect you to do, to do yours. I've given back to the society. I have an NGO on children. I have an NGO on widows. I give talks to children. I guide them. I take care of children. I have children that I, I, you know, I adopted, I'm taking care of. I've given back to society. You have to give me back. It's a two-way thing. It's a win-win situation. God, I have done my part. Do yours. In the little way you can give back. Give back. The hand that is like this is better than the one that is like this. And I do not want any of us hands to be down. Let your hands always, always be up. We all have one gift or the other in us, but have you taken out time to even know what your gift is? Chidima, have you taken out time to think of that gift God has given to you? Sometimes you see people walk this is very important, please. I need you to listen. You're serving someone today. 
You want to cheat the person. You want to play a fast one. You want to hurry and rip that person off so that you can stand. You will never stand. You will never stand. You know the best thing to do if you're tired is even better you pick your bag and leave honorably. Because your journey is far and you want to get there. But when you start to break your journey, you will never get there. You walk in this place, you cheat the person. You go to another company, you cheat the person. God is shortening, he's sorry, prolonging your journey for you. Be cheated, it doesn't matter. You walk in a place, somebody doesn't appreciate you, you're shortchanged, you're there, no problem. You pick your bag and go honorably. If you have served, that person knows. You move. God will create. You know there are some opportunities that are naturally not there. But well, because of you, God would create them. Yes, he would create. Because you have justified it. You write um, tests, you write projects, and this is justification. You have to justify everything in life. God, my marriage is failing. I've been true to him. I've been good. I've been a good wife. I've served. I've cooked a good, I've cooked good meals for him. I've done this. I've done that. I've done this. You justify. But God is not working. I've seen a woman that got the most, I don't know what word I should use, at 60, after a failed marriage. And you know what she said? When the marriage failed, when the, when the first marriage failed, she felt like the world was crumbling, the world was coming to an end. But getting this man at 60, is the best thing that has ever happened to her. She has justified. What if she has just sat in her comfort zone? The first one has failed now. Why would I even try the second one? Lack of resilience. In life, there are a lot of steps. As in you come to somebody's house and you truly need to see that person and the person is upstairs and the person asks you to come up, would you come from down to the middle of the stairs and stop there? And you want to get something from that person. Would you tell the person, I'm tired, I beg, I've reached half. You come from your room and meet me. Let's meet in the middle. Will that person take you serious? So that is how it is with resilience on your job. Put in your best. Your marriage, put in your best. These days, I don't really know. When, when I go for uh, marriages and I ask how old is this girl, they tell me, mm, she's 18, 19, and the guy is 25. And when I ask the parents, is, have you cancelled them? It's not about all this, you, how much have you spent on the marriage? No, that's not it for me. We have a lot of failed marriages because we do not teach our children resilience. If you notice, our parents were really resilient. To the point you will grow and ask, Mommy, what are you still doing in this house? I should tell you, where do I go to? Then naturally, a time would come that those things your dad was doing, you will now be asking yourself, ah, what's you know they come out again now? I bet they don't do the guy. They didn't do him anything. She has justified and in his head, he has felt that, I think I've done enough. So that is it with everything in life. That problem, that issue, that difficulty, when you keep thriving, it becomes a normal thing to you. That difficulty becomes a normal. So before you even think of suicide, you are busy, your brain is working. All you're thinking of is how to drive, how to trash this problem, this one comes, how to resolve this one, this one comes, how to scale through this one. Will suicide ever come to your mind? You are, you are, you are thinking. 
you see 18 years and two, I'm tired, I've had enough of life. <laughs> You've had enough of life. At 43 now, I still even want them to add maybe 60 years for me. Let me be 103. I've not had enough of life. Because I still have a lot of things I want to do. And then 18 is telling me that we're in trouble. So that's why I do a lot of counseling for these children. I do a lot of counseling for these children. A 14, was it a 15 year old was telling my daughter, he's my daughter's friend, that he wants to end it. It's not a joke, I had to cancel that child. Oh, I had to cancel him. He wants to end, I've had it. What have you had? If an 18 year old doesn't have that resilient spirit, then we're in trouble. What age would he get to to start thriving? For everything you want in life, you can get it. How resilient are you? How resilient are you? Are you ready to fight? Are you ready to fight? Chudima, are you ready to fight? We should all be ready to fight. We should not let one problem or one difficulty weigh us down and leave us there. We should thrive. We'll get there. It's a phase, it will pass. There's no difficult situation that has not passed. Has a dead man ever solved problems? You can be celebrated. You can be celebrated. You can be celebrated if you want to. 2023, inshallah, write on a sheet of paper what do, list out your plans. Your expectations, what you expect to do, this, what you want to do, how you want to achieve it. You'll be marveled. Yes, you're doing it, but you're not doing it the right way. And for you to achieve, you must do it the right way. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So the Bible has even told you. The Quran too will tell you that. So you too have to tell yourself. I see you as a great man. You know, the day you came to my house, I told you. You're going to be very great. But you are in so much hurry. Yes. Don't be overzealous. Being uh, resilient is different from being overzealous. Because if you're overzealous, you may even delve into some dirty things. Resilient, hardworking, she should be able to justify, never give up, always strive, and then the sky will all be your starting point. Thank you so very much. Start from the first to the second, right? You know, when I started this talk, I said, you may have a good job, you may be well paid, you may have money, and you still not be happy. A lot of people still ask this question, why did Kate Speed kill herself? Didn't you ask that? She committed suicide. Kate Speed. A very wealthy woman that was doing well. Why did she end it? It wasn't because of the good job, like you said. Why would someone who has a good job is well paid, why would he want to end it? She ended it because of a failed marriage. When I say resilience, yes. Why would suicide be the, the best option for you? 
Why won't you put a fight? You want to be happy, right? You work for it all. People say happiness is, is free, yeah. It's free. But then if you don't work for it, if you don't decide in your mind that you want to be happy, even if they are sharing it, when they get to your table, you wish it. You wish it. It's free. Nobody's even asking you a dime for it, right? But then you will shift. Please, I need to take this call. Sorry. Yeah. Hello, Clara. Mm. A, lot of, a lot of things can make him want to commit suicide. Sincerely speaking. When you have, do you know when you even have so much money and you're not engaging yourself in activities, you're not giving out, do you know you'll be depressed? It's very easy to be depressed if you're not preoccupied. If you are always isolated. <coughs> and that's the only clear strategy. Yes. If the lion wants to walk, it's very easy. If the lion wants to walk, okay, because look at it now. Like, yeah. you, you have so much money, you don't need to. Do you know sometimes even stressing out yourself to get money is interesting? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Have you realized? Yes. But when you have so much, you start asking yourself, Okay, what do I do now? Before, uh, should I? It's not only about traveling. It's not about eating good food. Because at this age now, so there's, you know, <laughs> a lot of things you eat are not even healthy. They're not good for your body. So it's not about food. It's not about good clothes. It's not about good shoes, designer wristwatches, and beautiful bags. That's not it. You should be able to engage. So that's why that thriving is that engagement. He checks his bank account. Probably he has only 100,000. What do I do to double this 100,000? You know, number one, he's moving. You know, he's thinking. He's, but, I need to put a but to it. Don't overthink. In thriving, don't hurt yourself. And that's why I said, most importantly, pray. I believe in prayers even more than you work hard, but then you pray more. In household, those is often never be a cow sam as doesn't bring results. So you put in your best, then you pray more. That is the justification. God, you said you, you want to bless the works of my heart. I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. I see, bless me. So that's why that thriving, that's why I said that resilience is thriving. You thrive to get more money, thrive to pass your exam, thrive. It makes life interesting. Even this talk I'm giving, I'm happy seeing you guys. I had one. I just came from one. Now again, they are calling me that I need to, I said, let, let me finish from. You know, it makes you happy. Okay, let's say I have so much money and I'm in my house. Nobody's talking to me. Nobody's telling me this. Nobody's. Do you think I'll be happy? I have so much money. Yes. But then, where's the happiness? Will you spend the money alone? Okay. okay. So, I'm Sorry, have I answered the first question? Yes. So the second question is, the second question is your mindset. It's very important. You know, these children that they use as... Um, bandits and all that. Do you know it's just their mindset they work with? They just sit them in a closed door like this. I can see you guys are really interested in what I'm saying. As in I'm having your 100% attention. Then the next thing I start to talk to you guys, I work on your psyche, I work on your mind. I say, no, do you know this thing is not like that? Because you have already believed so much in me. So by the time I start talking, this one will shake his head, and this one will turn and see this one shaking, he will nod too. The one at the back will say, uh-huh, three have agreed even before you know it, I have worked on your IQ, on your mindset. So your mindset is that for all these years, you have been writing your resolution, you have not been working with it. But this year, in your mind, you will not write and it will work for you. You have tuned your mindset 
to dance and it will work. You are tuned. What is a body without the mind? What is the body without the mind? What things of I have to read is your mind? What things of I shouldn't be evil is your mind? What things of I should be wicked is your mind? What things of I want to give somebody is your mind? So what is the body without the mind? And because you have tuned your mind, your whole body followed. And that's why you achieved it. So this year now, if you put it in your head that I'm going to write that resolution and I will go for it, you will thrive towards it. And you will get it. Because your mind, your whole body, your brain is set towards that goal. You will achieve. Why do you think a new company comes up and says, this is the mission, this is the vision, this is the goal? It's just because of resilience. You want to thrive towards achieving that goal. If my girl, my girl comes and says, eh, open the office, do, 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 do. no goal, no vision, nothing. Just come to work. You come to work. You call, you, you open your system. Guru, 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 guru. You, you come. Social media, open. Eh, put my God. And you guys don't know where your destination is. End of the year, when you even come and sit down, you ask yourself, what did you even mean? Is it not funny? And so that is how it is with everything about your life. You must strive. You must put it in your mind. Then you must, you must work and then achieve. It's just a straight line. But that straight line is, is difficult to get to the end, but then it's a straight line. People work, retirement age is either when you get to 35 years in service or when you get to 60 years. A lot of people will say, God, I want to live more above 60 years. I want to live above 60 years. You want to live, and inshallah, all of us will live above 50, uh, 60 years. If at the point of retirement, you have not actually gathered what will keep you till like maybe 90, 100, it depends on how many years God has kept for you. Is it not enough problems for you? And that person that doesn't want to be used, that person that doesn't want to give back, that person that feels, ah, they are using me, should just remain in his house. There's no point coming out. In the morning, you just brush your teeth, you shower, have some light breakfast, lie down in your bed. And in fact, even in that room, you will still feel that Nepa is using you. <laughs> <laughs> Nepa is using you. You're all by yourself. Nobody has entered the room. Nobody. You heard of the little girl that said, Ore is making headache, is giving her headache in her head. You didn't hear that girl that went viral? Yeah, the video. Video, <laughs> yes. Video. Yes, yes. She said she was trying to correct, <laughs> trying to correct him. I think like five objects. type objects. I think she's like, like five years or something. She said her two-year-old brother is giving her a headache in her head. <laughs> they asked her why did you beat him? Why did you beat Ore? He's, he's giving it in my head. <laughs> it went by. Already knows what headache is. Then an adult like you doesn't want to be used. I want to be used. Sitting down here, you, Mervon feels he's using me to give talk to you guys, right? I'm on air. It could go on YouTube. It could go around. And it can fetch me a $10 million job. Yeah. It should be used. I just told it in life. Always give room for justifications. When you say you don't want to be used, like um, 
you said you okay those people that are always disturbing you in your mind you just put but you need them the day they stop disturbing you the day you become irrelevant don't ever pray for that day don't pray for that day it's not a good prayer for you it's not for your siblings it's not for your children when I was um, 12 years old, I prayed on my 12th birthday. I prayed to God. I said, I want to be rich. God, I want to be so rich. I want to have money more than my dad. But God, any money I cannot share with people I don't know, do not give it to me. I challenged him from 12 years. And I stand to tell you that to the glory of God, I've not had any issues that will make me beg. Even if you call it brag, I'm bragging because of God. <coughs> you can brag in the right way. Brag in the right way. Do you know that some people go to a place and they lighten up the place. They may not have money. Do you know what they have done? They have touched lies. They have been used. Be used. Be used. Do you know, because I have used him, then when the one for money comes, anywhere he is, I look for him. Meg, where are you? Meet me now. Not that you're nonsense, so that you tell me 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Now. Go and do this, go and do this, go and do this. Because he has allowed me to use him freely, the one for money comes. I will not look for somebody else. So you have to be used before you use people. It's a win-win situation, right? If you don't give, you're an IT person, garbage in, garbage out. If you don't give, what will you take? The likes of um, Kubana, you guys will just see them and think, oh, Kubana is that, that, that rich. Yes, he's rich. But do you know the people that actually make him his friends? People that have used him one certain time. His mother's burial, if, if we were to die and come again, the mother would want to come, die, come, die, come, <laughs> die. Yes. I have not seen a befitting burial like that. I just pray she makes heaven. Because so I don't believe. Like yes. <laughs> <laughs> because when, you know, he trended and they invited him for an interview. They said you spent so much money. You slaughtered how many cows. You did this. And you know what he said? All these things you said I did, I didn't do them. But I did one thing. And they said, what well, everybody was thinking, he would say, I paid my dues. When you pay your dues, you guys will say, all oh, these old men want to be just sharing the court. This one will be governor today. Tomorrow this one will be president. They is the dues they have paid. One certain time, they were boys. They were used. And then their godfathers have seen opportunities. They will give it to them. You just sit there, you cross your leg. At the end of the day, they have not been used. Then, okay, so for instance, now you're here. Mevon has not used you. Mevon has maybe like 10 or five, uh, five or 10 staffs. He has not used any of you. Then at the end of the day, somebody now says, ah, hey, please recommend one of your staff for the... Let me have a look. This one that's looking at her, I know that any day I can't pay salary, she'll just go. I beg. He will step you down. And this one. Mm. When you see M uh, CEOs or, or guys doing... You know, I'm in that managerial district level, so I can actually tell you when we sit there in closed doors, Hey, what about that? I think one or guy was like, well, don't talk. Or guy, but I think 
church is, they don't go there on church, that one, that. So that is how we decide. That's how we decide. I was six months, I was six months in Zenith Bank when I, I got the uh, best customer service officer in Northwest Zone. I wasn't even confirmed. I broke record that year. And I bragged to people that when you go to Ademola Adetokumbo in um, uh, Lagos, Zenith Bank, I just said Adiogun, sorry. Once you enter, you go to their, uh, what do they call it? Museum. You see my plaque there. The first person that got an award six months on the job. Where to? The other person was spoiled. Like when I say spoiled uh, brat, she was pampered. She's the last born of her mom. Everything was done for her and everything. I just told you that I lost my mom when I finished secondary school, so I had to be a mom. You know? She comes in the morning, all she's doing, well, I'm tired. Uh, I didn't sleep well last night. And this one, uh. she'll sleep. I'll do everything. I'll do my own. I'll do her own. I wasn't complaining. I didn't know that people were watching. Six months, they said there was um, an awards night with Adora. I'm sure a lot of you know Adora in Zenith Bank. Yes. And they said, ah, Halima. They didn't even tell me I was collecting an award. They just said, hey, Halima, you're going to uh, represent Katana branch. I said, ah, in my mind, I said, six months, what do I even know to go and represent? My guy said, ah, my guy now gave me money. Go and buy a beautiful dress. In my mind, why all this preparation? Behold, we got to the hall. Do you know they announced my name three times? In my mind, I was like, no, they made a mistake. Best customer service officer, not West Zone. Halima Abdusalam, sincerely, three times, I couldn't stand up. Because I had asked myself, do I really deserve it? Do you know the people that appraised me? Not only people in Zenith Bank because I was customer service. Customers had sent messages. Whatever you do, I would tell, I always tell my subordinates, I hate eye service. Do it like nobody is watching and wait for the results. There's no need. You're serving today. You want to be served. So you have to be used. Any more questions? I have answered your question. Um, depression is a feeling. Depression is a feeling. They call it a big word, but it's simple. It's, it's a feeling in your head. Right? Do you know that even in this office, something can be depressing you? Something you will never imagine. It's very possible that, um, okay, I'm big. I come to the office and I see all slim girls. Yes, and in my mind I say, oh God. As soon as I enter the office and I see them with their skin people, I say, yes. My mind tells me, eh. <laughs> So, because I have it in my head, every day I cross from my house to this office, once I enter into this door, I get depressed. I get depressed. It's, it can start this week, go to the next week, the third week. Then I go back to the house and I look at myself in the mirror. I say, ah, they are slim. Do they have fine lips like mine? No. Mm -hmm. that, that one says she's fair. Mm -hmm. I can't even put it in my mind. But she has thin legs. My legs are full. I put it in my mind. They are very slim. They have flat tummy. 
Are they beautiful? Are they as beautiful as I am? I take it. They don't even cut work. You know, they are even too slim that they don't even cut work. But me, because I'm balanced, I cut work. I take it. By the time I do that, when I come to the office, I now put it to your face. You greet me that morning, I will look at you as in. I start looking from the legs that I've already said in my house that they are not. I put everything in my mind. And every day I come to the office, all my mind is telling me is that I'm the most beautiful. I just told you the story of a girl that I know if you had seen her, you would know she's ugly. She told me, not like that she's the finest of them all. In her mind. Probably if I had gone further to interview or talk to her, it may be a key to de depressing herself. She might have been in the past saying to herself she's very ugly. And she realizes that it's killing her. So before you start it, she tells you she's beautiful. She doesn't want to know what you have to say. And she is beautiful too, in her mind. I've seen a very pretty girl that her husband talked her to believing she's ugly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not about what. It's about your mindset. Do you know how long it took these people to convince these bandits? In the morning, they tell them. In the afternoon, they tell them. In the evening, it's not jazz. Oh. It's not jazz. The mind is deep. The mind is deep. So, depression is from you. The depressing yourself is from you. I had a madam that tells people that if she comes to this world, she wants to be my biological mother. She was so depressed to the point that every time she goes to see the cardiologist, they keep increasing her doses of BP medicine. And then one day I walked up to her office. I said, I, I, was, I was tired of it too. Because her depression was getting to us. When she comes to, to the office in the morning, she has to give you a feel of her depression. And because I counsel people on depression, I had known that this is what she's going through. Nobody told me I didn't ask questions. But I felt it. And I felt that she was trying to dish it out, out to everybody. And a happy person would, like me would not take it. So that morning, she started. She was talking. I didn't bug. I'm talking to you. I said, Ma'am, I'm listening. When she finished, I followed her to the office. I said, Ma, I just hope you don't kill yourself. Are you talking to me? I'm talking to you, and I want to talk to you today, not as a boss. I want to talk to you as a daughter and mother. Ma, you have to take it easy. Some of us are happy, despite what we're going through. Yes. Please, don't rub it on us. Don't rub it on us, Mama. To be rebellious. I said, no. Mom, I need you to do three things. I don't like this hair you're carrying. I was blunt. You know, when people are depressed, you have to be hard on them. Don't let them sulk. Don't let them sulk. You have to be hard, dogged, to take them out. Because it took them years to get into that depression. So if you want to pull them out fast, you have to be very, very, yes. So I said, Ma, I don't like this, your hair. I wasn't talking to her like my boss. I, do, I, I, I didn't care. Ma, I don't like this, your hair. Have I told you about your hair? This is my hair. I said, I don't like it. Ma, I don't like your style of dressing. You mean, your, Ma, I don't like it. I was ready to take it. If it's query, whatever you want to give me. But today I will end your depression. I don't like your hair. Ma, I still don't even like your style of leadership. I don't like those three things about you. And I've never put them to you. 
but you come, you're not even putting a human face to it. You tell us you want this now and now. So when I told her, Halima, yes, I think I'm the best. I have this case, I have this, I this, 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 this. She mentioned everything, I was smiling. Smile, let them know that you're also going through some things. Even when you have to lie. Paint some very bad stories, pictures. Because if you want to counsel someone, don't counsel the person based on a book. Give the person life experiences. If you have to lie, lie to the person. Look, people go to London to see therapists. And I tell my friends, come. If you need to see a therapist, bring that money, convert it, give me. I'll cancel you. I'll cancel you. What is that thing that is depressing you? The day you came to this life, you were not informed. The day you're leaving, you will still not be informed. So do not end it yourself. Somebody brought you, and it's that person that is taking you. So you don't have a right to end it before that person takes you. Be patient. A lot of people, a lot of people have gone through a face. They are out of it. Some waited till people came to their aid. Some sat down and said, ah, nada a deal. Like that one that sent message in the morning that we should take her out of depression. So it is your mindset. Why getting depressed over an issue that you know God can solve? You know, I tell people that if you don't believe in the words of God, don't go to church. No, don't go to church. That's why you can't even deceive me. When you come and you say you want to preach. Me, I know the Bible very well. I know Quran. Before you tell me, I tell you. I went to a Catholic school. Right from when I was a child, they used to give us Old Testament. This it, was, it was all the sisters, nuns that, that, you know, were our teachers. Fathers, reverend fathers were our teachers. I know the Bible. I know the Quran. You can't confuse me. I tell people, if you don't believe in the words of God, don't go to church. How can you say, I believe in God. I know God is going to do it, and then you sulk. Oh, mm. Ah, that embarrassment to gossip table. I tell you. <laughs> because he has said it. If, if, if you feel I'm not um, treating you right, let's go to court. State your case and I will state mine and see if I will not vindicate you. Mm. That is God's word. I am the only God that will do it. I will say it should be and it must be. Why are you struggling? Has God not ended everything for you? Before you speak, he knows what is in our mind. But he wants us to ask. If God can know the strands on your hair, everything, he can count it. What else? What is the problem you have that you can share with God? Is it marriage? It's a come. Children, you will have. I, I always tell my children that, okay, like when they were in primary two, three, four, I put them in public uh, speaking club. And my son was a big Mama, why? Mama, I going? He said, you must be in that club. I know how to talk. I said, you must be in that, talk, in that club. You should be able to speak out. I'm a very private person. He knows. Very private. But then, as an adult, you would have taught it and see who is that person you can actually talk to. 
I'm not an advocate of telling someone every because like I always tell people that when you tell someone everything about you, you are at a very weak state. It will be very easy to get to you. You know me on the surface. You don't know my next move. You don't know what I'm thinking of. You don't know what I'm going to strike. You don't know what I'm going to do. It's better. Let it be you to everyone. But then there's that one person that you feel you can talk to. Nobody that is an island. You will die. You will kill yourself. Every day. He's a loner. She's a loner. Then the next thing, oh, he killed himself. Why wouldn't he kill himself? Nobody to talk to. You have a problem, nobody to share it. You have not eaten, nobody to say, bros, I beg. What's in the house? Because you're a loner. Even the disciples were not left alone. Adam wasn't left alone. That's why they brought Eve. How do you now think you can you can you can cheat God on that. If you're in a depressed state, let me tell you things you can do. Go to parks. Go to places where you see children that will giggle, that will you know, do things that will make you laugh. Give. If you're depressed and you have 100 naira, give. As little as 100 naira. To one person, just give. It's not everything that is money. Sometimes you have the money, but you're not happy. So when we talk about depression, a lot of things that comes to people's mind is, he doesn't have money, he's broke, he can't pay house rent. No. See your neighbor now that has a good job, is well paid, but he's depressed. All these small, small things are what keeps you and makes you happy. Is it a man that is depressing you? What I always put in my head is, I wasn't created for you. I will not die because of you. Yeah. I will not. You're not the first. You will never be the last. If it's not working, move. People will say, ah, hey, Halima, when you talk, you say, hey, if it's not moving, if it's not working, you move. If you have tried, if you have worked so hard in your marriage, in your relationship, you sit down, you tell yourself the truth. These are the things that is not working. You have tried. Please, my dear, move. It may not be your end in the marriage, but move. Let him appreciate you or let her appreciate you. You know what makes a lot, what causes a lot of problems? You have a wife, and you see that you're always having fracos, you're always having issues, and you have not separated to actually appreciate yourselves. If you stay, eh, the pastor said, to, forever to, together, forever, and let it will kill you. You are depressing yourself, you're sulking, he's there enjoying himself. You know, it's a man's world. You can walk and come back 1 a.m. to If you talk, you start another fight. But you have been in the house talking. He has gone to the depress himself. He will play with his friends, take one or two bottles, as they say, play this, do that. If he even sees one girl, chai and everything, keep one side chick. Can you do all of that? You cannot. And that's why if you see anything that is going to depress you, you just move away. Sort it out. Ask yourself questions. Is this what you really want? Is this most times people just say, I'm into a relationship, he left me, and it, before you know it, boom, you get into depression. When God is, is saving you from issues, problems. You have forgotten that if you cannot pray for yourself, your poor mother is busy praying for you. That God, what I have suffered in this life, let my children not suffer. Then God has brought suffering and Automatically taking him out of your life, and you are busy sulking. My dear, nothing is worth depressing you. Nothing. Is it health challenge? 
Is it marital challenge? Is it relationship? Is it work related? Is it finances? Everything can be put in place with God. Take yourself out of depression. Never allow yourself to get into depression. Because if you're depressed, the time you're used, supposed to use to get to work, to get finances and everything, you're busy taking drugs, seeing one therapist or the other. You don't need it. Anything that makes you happy, do it. Please. Say no to depression. Yeah. Please, That's it. You know, I know, in fact, the method is designed such that my mother 